Hello folks, my name is Mark Wilson and I'm the founder of AccuModel, where we inspire confidence in hydraulic modeling. This tutorial is another in a series of tutorials that follow along with the EPANET user's manual. Today we're in section 2.8 running an extended period analysis. Okay, the first thing that the section talks about is adding a pattern. Here's a random diurnal pattern I found off the internet that I typed in the values here. And then these are actually in flow units. And these are one hour time steps for a total of 24 hour steps. And then I averaged the actual flows and then use that as a divisor in dividing each individual flow measurement by the average to get a multiplier and you can see that when we do a average on the whole of the multipliers usually we need to come out with an average of 1.0 there are some exceptions but the theory behind that is that the demand that you put in to each junction represents the average daily demand for whatever type of analysis you're doing so when you use some kind of a diurnal pattern to factor that up and down throughout the day you want to factor the average up and down and those are the type of multipliers that you would use sometimes if you're doing something like a industrial or a golf course and depending on the situation you're in you may not end up with an average of 1.0 if you have those type of situations and would like some help with that give us a call and we'd be glad to help you out with your modeling efforts okay so how do you get that into epnet though so here on the data browser we're going to go to patterns and we're going to click the new button or add button now one thing i want to point out here is this pattern id of one has that particular id of one has some ramifications if you decide to take your epa net model and use it in a software like infowater the default Pattern ID 1 is a special case in EPNet Engine and can sometimes be assigned to your demand even when you're not intending it to do. So we're going to use a pattern of 2, even though that deviates from the user's manual a little bit, just to make sure we don't have any unintended consequences. So I'm just going to go ahead and punch in these time steps and then I push the right arrow. If you do the tab button, it won't go. It'll go to one of the other buttons in the interface. So I'm just going to quickly punch these in. And I'm going to actually pause this video because uh, you don't want to watch me type all these in. Okay, so now we've uh, punched in all of 24 multipliers at each of our 24 hours worth of time steps that we're going to use and again this deviates a little bit from the user's manual but it's the same concept we're using one hour time steps and we're going for 24 hours you'll notice when you set up your times and which we'll do in a minute that you end up with a related time period one hours here and the proper number of time periods which is 24 I've already set up a 24 hour simulation when you hit enter though you can actually enter more time periods in here one thing to point out here is this blue line is the average of all those multipliers and it tells you what the average is like i said typically you want that at 1.0 for most cases so we're going to click ok and we're going to go ahead and assign a demand pattern to all of these we're going to use the one we just created, number two, okay now we've got that pattern assigned to all of the demands in the model. And one last thing we need to do is look at times. 
So we're going to run this simulation for 24 hours with a hydraulic time step of one hour. These are all in hours, minutes. And the other important thing, pattern time step, one hour. We're going for 24 hours. If we were to do, say, like 48 hours and keep our pattern time step one hour, what happens is the pattern that we only have 24 entries in gets recycled. It just starts over again. So that's really helpful you know, when we're running longer simulations. We'll just go for 24 hours though. And in some models you'll want your reporting time step to be smaller. If you need to capture smaller increments of information in your output, in your graphs, things like that. Sometimes if your reporting time step is too large, you can miss important things that are going on in your model. I typically like to go like 15 minutes. On large models that means though that you can have an awful lot of output but sometimes it's necessary. So let's just see if we've got enough data in there to make this thing run. Run was successful. Now with time varying results and one important aspect of EPANet to look at since it's a fixed demand model and not pressure dependent that means if we're simulating over a period of time we're relying on the change in demand to actually make things change in the model. Otherwise, things won't actually change in the model. Our results won't change. We have to change the demand to make anything really happen in the model. So let's look at, say, a junction pressure is what we're interested in. Okay, we can see that it does change from a max of like 62 to a minimum of like 51. So that's a fair amount of change. Another way to look at output here is again in our tables, but we do have to choose a time period to look at. So we'll look at one in the morning. And there we go, there's our pressures, our head, etc. Well, that's all we have for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, watch all the other tutorials in the playlist, like the video if it was helpful to you, and check us out on www.acu-model.com and let us know if we can help you out in your modeling efforts. Good luck!